Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match, actually no GD match, no GD match results, instead I'm going to show you his results with my own ethnic calculator uh, for Hvit of, of uh, Abkhazia. Now who is Hvit? Hvit is this guy right here, uh, you can see in this picture he is the guy on the top right, uh, and the woman to the left of him is his sister. Uh, Hvit was born in Abkhazia from a mixed background. His mother was African and his father was obviously some kind of native Caucasian, Abkhazian or Georgian individual. What's interesting about Hvit's mother is, uh, I've covered this in my previous video that I posted yesterday, so I do suggest you look at that video. She lived a very tough life. Uh, she was a woman with a severe mental illness and and because of that, and because of her unusual appearance as well, uh, she was actually misclassified as a completely different species, and she was treated very, very horribly in Abkhazia in the 19th century. They chained her, they would uh, rape her. They, I mean, it's it's just a very horrible life that she had, very, very unfortunate. Uh, but her son, Hvit, right here, is. we're going to look at his results, and we're going to see what he scores. As you, you, In this picture, you can actually see what he looks like, so it's going to be very interesting to compare his, pre his predicted phenotype with my... Um, uh, with my trait predictor versus his actual phenotype. So we're going to start with that, actually. Let's look at the phenotype oracle. And the closest phenotypes to him is this uh, in the top, followed by this. And third place comes this. Let's hold on. Let's see. Is this really, is this really similar to what he uh, looks like? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's very similar. The nose is very different. But... I don't really have any phenotypes in the Oracle that would be even closer to him in reality than this. Uh, for the two-way mixtures, the closest phenotype mixture is 50% this plus 50% this. So I don't know, you tell me in the comments, do you think this kind of a phenotype mixture is sort of, um, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of correct? I don't know, I mean, I think it is sort of correct. There is some features that he has from the bottom he, he has some pictures from the top for example his eye shape is more like from the top his nose shape is definitely more like from the bottom his lip shape also is definitely more like from the bottom overall his head structure like his uh skull um skull shape is definitely more like on the top so it's it's quite interesting now let's go ahead and see he looks like he has curly hair as well so let's let's see what he scores for the pigmentation and hair texture, it looks like he's got darkest brown eyes, 72% likelihood of darkest brown eyes, so he definitely has very dark eye color. Uh, likelihood of brown eyes is only 25%. It looks like he has black hair, okay? It looks like he has light brown skin, okay? So definitely very light brown skin, not dark brown, not olive, but light brown skin. And it looks like he has kinky hair. He's predicted to have kinky hair with my trade predictor. Uh, does he have kinky hair? Let's see, hold on. I don't think so. It doesn't look like he has kinky hair uh, with the picture. Uh, it looks like he has, well, curly, but not kinky. So that's definitely quite interesting. And his sister even has straight hair, I think it looks like. So she, the, the lady on the, on the left, it looks like she has straight hair, but maybe she was straight uh, straightening it with something. Like, people often do that. Uh, let's see what he scores for the haplogroup. His haplogroup is actually R1b, so his father, whoever his father is in Abkhazia, was a um, carrier of the R1b haplogroup. And for the ethnic calculator results, let's see what he scores for that. It's a very good file. 604 SNPs is very good. <coughs> the closest populations to him is Natufians, followed by Egyptian pre Ptolemaic mummy, followed by Berber, followed by BMAC, followed by Levant Chalcolithic Algerian, and only after that comes Chimera mercenaries from the Caucasus, Kenyan Pastorialis Neolithic, Bactrians, and Upper Paleolithic Mongolia. Very interesting. Uh, so with the two-way mixture, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Georgian plus Kenya Pastorialis Neolithic. So basically Sub-Saharan African plus Georgian, uh, which I think is very close to uh, what he really is in terms of his ancestry because his mother is Sub-Saharan African and his father is, uh, I presume, Georgian or Abkhazian. The second closest mixture is Iranian individual plus Kenya pastoralist Neolithic, once again a mixture of black and uh, and Iranian or West Asian. And the third closest mixture is Pinarbasi hunter-gatherer from Anatolia plus once again Kenyan pastoralist Neolithic, same sample right here. So the, the three closest uh, models for him are all a mixture of some kind of West Asian individual plus some kind of a East African individual. Definitely very interesting. 
Uh, let's see what he scores for the biomarkers panel. So it looks like he's got a predisposition to higher than average levels of vitamin D. Definitely very cool. Very good to see. Higher than average levels of LDL cholesterol. Very good as well. Actually, no, that's not very good. But it's okay. He's still within a healthy range. Slightly below average levels of HDL cholesterol, which is kind of okay as well. Um, he's got slightly below average levels of glucose. Typical. Uh, he's got uh, slightly above average hemoglobin. Pretty typical as well. Very good blood pressure. Um, it looks like he's got slightly below average level of iron in blood, so he does not have hemochromatosis. That's really good to see. Uh, slightly below average level of sex hormone binding globulin in blood. Once again, really good to see. Um, and slightly below average red blood cell count, which is not so good to see. But overall, there's nothing too unusual in this result. Let's see his polygenic risk scores, what he scores for those. So it looks like he's got a average risk score for leukemia. Uh, he's got a average risk score for vitiligo. He's got a higher than average risk score for myopia. He's got an average risk score for primary biliary cirrhosis. He's got a below average risk score for stroke. He's got a very low score for male pattern hair loss. So it looks like the um, vari variations he received from his mother sort of protected him from male pattern hair loss because she had a very low score for that. So thanks to his mom, He's uh, a little bit protected from male pattern hair loss, which is definitely very good. Uh, not going to go bold. Uh, it looks like he's got a below average risk score for atrial fibrillation, below average score for deep vein thrombosis, which is very different from his mom. A slightly below average score for bipolar type 1, which is really good, once again different from his mom. A average risk score for schizophrenia, once again really different from his mom, who had a high score for that. It looks like he's got a slightly above average score for type 2 diabetes, a high score for Alzheimer's. So we're going to look at the Alzheimer's result a little bit because uh, I feel like the Alzheimer's result might be very interesting to see. Uh, him scoring 4.8 times the average for that is definitely very interesting. Um, he's got a below average loss for multiple sclerosis, really good to see. So the only thing we really have to watch out for is Alzheimer's. For cancer section, 3 risk variants for breast cancer of 22, which is really good. 10 risk variants for testicular cancer of 24, which is really good. Uh, one risk gradient for celiac disease out of 10, which is really good. None, no risk gradients for GSS out of 14, which is really good. Six for Crohn's out of 28, good as well. One risk gradient for Raffinstein's out of 22, good as well. And seven for Parkinson's out of 44 is kind of bad, but I can't really verify that. There is no panel for Parkinson's on my, um, on this, in this result. So I can't really see what variance it is that he scores, uh, for risk gradients for Parkinson's. Maybe that's going to be different in the future. Maybe I'm going to change that. But so far, it looks like he, um, so far, it looks like he has seven risk variants for Parkinson's. So really, the only thing we have to really watch out for is um, Alzheimer's. Let's go ahead and see uh, and check through the result and see what he gets for that. So it looks like he's got um, heterozygous and Komtsvalmet variation, which means he's between warrior and warrior. And he actually has a warrior genotype in MAOA, which is definitely very interesting. So he's definitely more close to warrior than warrior in terms of phenotype. Uh, he's got... Um, slightly less dopamine in the system um he's got slightly quicker breakdown of dopamine due to the uh due to, due to the abundance of maoa enzyme that breaks down dopamine for drd2 it looks like he's predisposed to a pretty much typical or intermediate number of dopamine due to receptor sites definitely very interesting to see uh and he does not have long form 5 HTTLPR, so he's got short form 5 HTTLPR just like his mom um for autism, it looks like I don't I don't really want to talk about this to be honest. I don't really care about autism. For OXTR and empathy gene, it looks like he's got a predisposition to slightly lower levels of empathy, which is different from his mom, who was scoring I think slightly higher for the levels of empathy. For lactose persistence, it looks like he does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Um, we're gonna skip diabetes and all that stuff for because we already saw the polygenic risk score, so we don't really care about this. For hemochromatosis, he does not carry any risk variants for hemochromatosis. He is, however. A carrier of something I just noticed. He's a carrier of GLUT1 deficiency syndrome variant in tier 432 tier. I'm not really sure what that manifests itself in. Um, let's look it up actually. Because I, I forget the stuff I added like weeks ago. So um Devivo disease is an autosomal dominant genetic metabolic disorder associated with the deficiency of GLUT1. A protein that transport that transports gluto glucose across the blood brain barrier. So it looks like it's uh, it looks like it's a uh, diabetes thing. It's a rare condition that impairs brain metabolism, causes seizures, movement disorders, developmental delays, 
and speech slash language impairments, right? So that's what we see. It's a problem transporting um, glucose. So he's a carrier, and it's said that um, it's dominant, but I don't really trust that because because uh, that would mean he actually has um, the condition. So I don't really know. I don't, I don't really know. What do you think? Maybe it, it could it could also just be a missed call. It could also just be one of those problems with genotyping. It could be a genotyping error. So I don't really know. All right, for Alzheimer's, we remember he scored high for Alzheimer's, and now we see why that is. It's because he has one risk allele for Alzheimer's in APOE. Uh, in this variation of APOE, has, he has heterozygous genotype. So that's that's the reason he's scoring so high for Alzheimer's. Um, for multiple sclerosis, it looks like he does not have any risk variants in HLA gene, which is really good, good, good to see. Uh, for cardio, we're going to skip that. For myopia panel, we saw his risk score for myopia, so we don't really care about that. For facial morphology panel, it looks like he's got no East Asian genotypes in EDAR. Uh, he's got some genotypes for lower, short, mid-phase length, intermediate odds of protruding nasal bridge, a larger nose size, and thicker eyebrows. So he's got two genotypes for thicker eyebrows. Does he have thicker eyebrows? Not really. I mean, if you look at his eyebrows, they're pretty they're pretty sparse. So I don't know why. Uh, interesting. But he's got some genotypes for thicker eyebrows. All right. Quite cool. Uh, for telomere panel, it looks like he's got the same genotype as his mom here. Uh, once again, he is, his biological age is older. He's got shorter telomeres. But unlike his mom, he does not carry any risk variants for vitiligo in the HLA gene. Um, for the miscellaneous section, no micropenis. Really good to see. No micropenis again. Uh, none of the micropenis mutations. Really good to see. Um, mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. One fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99, higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. He likely has photic sneeze reflex, which is really uncommon, very rare. Uh, no variants for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And he actually has heterozygous genotype in this variation of EDAR. So we remember from his mom's results that his mom had um, homozygous East Asian allele here in EDAR. Or I guess you, you could say, I, I guess you could say um, non-European allele. So for him, he's got heterozygous gene type. That means his dad had at least one European allele in EDAR in this variation. Does is it does it reveal a lot about his dad? Not not really. I mean, not really. It doesn't really reveal too much about his father's um, genotype in EDAR. But it's just interesting to look at. Okay, for blood pressure, it looks like he's got uh, AA in this variation and GG in this variation. So he's got. I think I think the AA here is the is the uncommon allele that causes uh, much higher odds of having a heart attack or heart failure due to uh, being treated with beta blockers. I'm not really sure. This is something I added in my new in the new version of Trade Predictor, but this is a file that I generated yesterday, so it didn't have that uh, didn't have that predictor. But I remember that AA genotype here is really like rare uncommon and it causes an increase in the risk of heart failure from using beta blockers all right so um he's got lower odds of cannabis induced psychosis higher odds of meth induced psychosis all right uh and no variance zero risk risk variance for pain hypersensitivity out of 12 total and scn 9a uh for testosterone looks like he's got typical all the genotypes that cor correlate to typical levels of testosterone However, he's also got genotypes that correlate to increased levels of estradiol. Really good to see. Uh, for autism and a typical... No, albinism, excuse me. <laughs> albinism and a typical traits panel. It looks like he does not carry any of the albinism mutations. He also is not a carrier for Melanesian blonde hair variants, and he does not have uh, cleft lip or palate. For familiar Med Mediterranean fever, he does not carry any risk variants for that. Really good to see. Uh, despite being a Mediterranean genetically person, uh, very Mediterranean, actually. For MTHFR panel, it looks like he doesn't. He has a really healthy genotype here in the MTHFR, which leads to slightly lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses, from autism to coronary heart disease. For cancers panel, it looks like he does not have any risk variants for cancer in the KTLG gene, which is really good to see. All of these are uh, significant reductions in the risk of testicular cancer. So the testicular cancer is not something he has to worry about. For leukemia, we remember he scored above average, but if you look at the genotypes here, um, it looks like he has some genotypes that definitely increase the odds of leukemia. But no risk variants in NQO1, which is by far the most important variation for leukemia. Uh, for 
uh, rare diseases and trace panel. Looks like he does not have any risk variance for holo prosencephaly. Uh, which is kind of like Cyclopia. We remember the previous video I made on Zana. She had risk variance for that. So it's really good that she did... Either it was a missed call in her file, or it was actual genotype that she had, but that she did not pass on to Huit. So Huit is healthy. He does not carry any risk variance for this. In case you want to look up what that is, let me do that for you. Let me entertain you a little bit. Holopro... Yeah. Yeah, it's this. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That that is crazy. That is that is crazy. So it's good that he does not have any risk variance for that. Um, he's got this gene type, which is to increase to five times increased risk of rheumatoid arthritis, which is kind of uncommon as well. Uh, let's see what other uncommon gene types does he have. Um, does he carry any risk variance for? Nope, not really. Doesn't really carry any risk variance for anything that's concerning. Uh, for celiac disease, once again, no risk variance in HLA. So he's very healthy. Uh, unlike his mom, he is actually very, very healthy. Uh, it looks like he's got, it looks like he's got three APOB risk variants for familiar hypercholesterolemia. So he falls into the good range. Three is in the good range here. Doesn't have to really worry about problems with lipids. Um, he's got this gene type here in the AR, AR gene, which means he won't go bald. Once again, he inherited this from his mom, so he indeed will not go bald. He's got the same genotype here as his mom. They're both protected from uh, male pattern hair loss. For HIV and AIDS panel, it looks like he's got some protective variants from HIV, but he also has this genotype, which uh, two risk variants for increased susceptibility to AIDS and higher HIV viral load. Very uncommon. So I'm, I'm not sure which one of these is more important. Uh, and for muscular dystrophy myopathies, it looks like he has some risk variants for that, actually. So we remember that his mom had risk variants for that, and he has them as well. Uh, but thankfully, he does not have any risk variance for ADL, which is really good. So uh, ADL is the one you really have to watch out for if you're, if you're um, uh, a boy, because it affects boys much more brutally than it does girls. So it's good that he doesn't have any risk variance for ADL. Color blindness panel, he does not have any risk variance for color blindness in OPN1, OPN1 LW or OPN1 SW, and nothing was found for OPN1 MW. For FCO gene panel, it looks like he's got genotypes that basically reduce the risk of obesity. Uh, all of these are reducing the risk of obesity. He's, he's probably got predisposition to lower odds of obesity. Uh, for syncope panel, he's got below average odds for syncope. That was based on 7 SNPs. And for bio traits panel, biological traits, it looks like he's got two copies of the hunter-gatherer CLTCL1 gene variant, which leads to reduced ability to process carbs and sugars. Um... He's got this gene type, which leads to shorter sleep duration, and it's likely European or East Asian. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about here? I don't, there's so much stuff, but I don't want to talk about any of it. Uh, for blood group panel, it looks like his blood type is type B. All right, definitely very interesting. Uh, that's that's an uncommon blood type for humans. Uh, there, it's, there's also a possibility of type A. You can see there's 67% type B possibility. 27% type A possibility. So he could also have type A blood type, theoretically. That's also possible. Or even type AB. There is a 4% chance is, is not nothing. Uh, but we do, know, we do know for certain that his blood type is not type O. He does not have type O blood type. Most likely it's type B, but type A and type AB is also sort of possible. Well, um, that's pretty much all there is I want to show you for this individual, for Hvit. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And of course, I want to remind you that you can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.